Call to order the Tuesday, October 22nd, Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The board agenda was posted on the 18th of October at 1 p.m. Thank you, John. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Roll call. There are 23 supervisors present. Thank you. And you probably, some of you see a new face out here tonight. Jackie Veldman is representing um, Town of Mitchell. She's new, obviously replacing Dick Bemis, who after 39 and a half years, I believe it was, uh, moved on. We miss Dick, and welcome Jackie. Thank you. Approval of the September 17th, 2019 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. We're having a little trouble here. I'll second that. Your lights, okay. Thank you, we've had a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, uh, please push your I or nay button. Journals approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. We have none. Public addresses. There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements. I have two. One is a resolution from the Wood County Board of Supervisors in support of revising and amending statutes to court fees and costs in probate and juvenile court. We received that before, so we'll receive that for information. The second one is a resolution from Portage County Board of Supervisors in supporting nonpartisan procedure for redistricting. And we obviously re received that before, so we'll receive that for information. Thank you. That is all. Thank you, John. Uh, County Administrator's Report. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, everyone. Welcome, Jackie Veldman. It's good to have you here, and I want to acknowledge uh, Chairman uh, Wagner and Vice Chairman Koch for their selection. I think Jackie is going to be a tremendous addition to our team and certainly her experience as chair of the town of Mitchell bodes well. So welcome. Uh, you are joining a pretty accomplished team here in Sheboygan County, Jackie. We have got a track record that we're proud of and the budget on your desks is a reflection of the collaboration and, and teamwork that we have in Sheboygan County. We, we kick off our budget process, as the board knows very well, in June. We have our leadership forum. A lot of people have their fingerprints on this. Every committee, every department head, a number of staff. Ultimately, our finance committee does the heavy lifting, and I want to recognize finance committee chair Bill Gehring and all the members of the finance committee for their good work. On your desk is the proposed 2020 budget. It'll be more formally introduced next week and then acted on the following week. But we encourage you to go through it if, if you're so inclined to get a better feel of some of the departments perhaps that you weren't as involved in or if you didn't attend finance committee meetings. But my compliments to everyone involved. We are positioned for success with our goal. All of the departments hit the targets. And as you'll be able to read in, in the budget, uh, we have a number of new initiatives 
and improvements as well. We respectfully ask that if you have an inclination, inclination to make an amendment to the budget following the public hearing next week, to please contact the finance director or the corporation council, hopefully both, so we can be prepared with that amendment and just make sure we have the right language so when a motion is made by you that we're prepared to um, work in collaboration with the county clerk's office and, and get that motion acted on or considered. So again, if you have any amendments in mind, please contact Wendy or Crystal. The last thing I want to say about the budget is you have it at a level five. And what does that mean? Well, it's a pretty high-end summary of it. The Finance Committee has seen all of the heavy detail, and there's also a level seven that's out there. So if you go through this and you're like, I want more detail, don't hesitate to go to our finance department or again call Wendy Sharnan, our finance director, and ask for that level seven, and we'll provide that to you. And then the last thing I wanted to briefly touch on was Rocky Knoll. You know, 19 departments here providing services from A to Z. I mean, it's, it's just remarkable. You know, 850 employees, over 207 programs and services. Uh, we're involved in a lot. We do a lot to, to help the community be successful. And the longer you're on this county board, the more you recognize that, probably the more committees you've served on. Uh, as I've shared with some of you, perhaps most of you, you know, my parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents were all born and raised in Sheboygan County. My grandpa, Forrest Payne, was at Rocky Knoll when it was a TB center. A second cousin of mine, Floyd Payne, lived to be 107, passed away at Rocky Knoll, one of the oldest male residents to ever live at Rocky Knoll. And more recently, my mother, it was Eileen Toggy when she grew up on the Century Farm there on TT, Eileen Payne, she had double knee surgery and went through rehab at Rocky Knoll. I think one thing we all share in this room is how critically important it is we provide the best service we can to our friends and family members and constituents of Sheboygan County. We don't have to be in the nursing home business. And a number of years ago, we had more beds than any county in the state. We had a comprehensive health care center, Sunny Ridge. I mean, we've done some consolidating and some things that helped us be more fiscally responsible. But I personally, and I think most of you feel this way, Rocky Knoll is a jewel of a facility. It provides very important care to our family and friends, residents of the community. And if we're going to be in the nursing home business, as far as I'm concerned, we are going to provide the best care that we can possibly provide. And to the credit of Kayla Clinton and all of our employees at Rocky Knoll, we just had a state survey. And as you can imagine, any time state surveyors come in, and there's five of them, and they're going through everything, everything associated with nursing, dietary, housekeeping, the buildings, the grounds, I mean, they're looking at everything. And that can create a little bit of trepidation, right? Everyone kind of checking things out. And it's not unusual to have some citations because there's always opportunities for improvement. But I am so pleased to share, and I sent an email out to all of you late this afternoon. We had an outstanding state survey, only two citations in um, our health inspection only two citations, and to put that in perspective, the average number of citations for a skilled nursing home in Wisconsin is six, and the national average is eight. So this is one of the least number of citations we've ever had. We've, we have a five-star rating, which as you know is the highest rating a nursing home can have. We're only one of two nursing homes in the county that has a five-star rating, and this state survey further bolstered that survey. And our, our five-star rating. It's tremendous. So if you see Kayla or you see anyone working at Rocky Knoll, uh, give them your congratulations. I mean, again, always opportunities for improvement. We can't rest on our laurels, but I am so proud of Kayla and her team and the good work that's happening at Rocky Knoll and the services that are being provided to our community. So uh, we should celebrate some success. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Okay, consideration of committee reports. Executive Committee, resolution number 12. 
regarding approving revisions to farmland preservation plan, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of res resolution number 12. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Glavin. Second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. That resolution is approved unanimously. Resolution number 13. Regarding approving an easement for Village of Kohler sewer interceptor, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 13. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Is there a second? Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of Committee Reports Finance Committee. Resolution number 11. Regarding authorizing an application for fiscal year 2019 Justice Assistance Grant Program Award. Recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Testruti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move to adopt. Thank you, Supervisor Testruti. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any questions or comments? Supervisor, Bru Supervisor Brula, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but the resolution said that this was for tasers and other supplies, something on other items. It wasn't very specific. Okay. It was it was very specific about the tasers. Right. So I'm confused why they would mix the two. It would either be a, a general or should we have a list specifically? Okay. Uh, I don't see the sheriff here. I don't know if anybody can handle that question. It's a reasonable question. I don't have an answer for you. I'm sorry. Um, we didn't expect that one, but uh, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with your question. Uh, I know it's a grant, but that's about all I can tell you. Uh, Supervisor Epping. This is a grant that the, we usually get annually. We share with the city, and it goes for general supplies, and, and sometimes they specify uh, certain items, but it's something that's a usual annual occurrence. Thank you. Okay. That, that helps, I think. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Anybody else with a question or a comment? Okay. Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. is also approved unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 14. Regarding authorizing county aid for bridge and culvert construction in the towns of Herman, Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, Sherman, and Wilson, <coughs> recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Testrudy. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudy. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Resolutions also approved unanimously. Okay, and the next one is a committee report, and I know everybody's long awaited this every year, so go ahead, John. No, it's 2019 Douglas and Claims Payment. Uh, we don't need to take a vote on that, we just receive it for information. So, anyways, and consideration of committee reports, Human Resources Committee, a committee report. Annual report on health insurance. Do anybody have any questions or comments? We don't need to vote on that either. That's just the report. Okay. Seeing no lights, I'll turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 15 from the executive committee. 
regarding designating an office of the Corporation Council to represent the interests of the public concerning termination of parental rights, children in need of protective services, and guardianship proceedings. Resolution number 15 will be referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number 16 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding transfer of interest in remnant parcel to Petrie Pubs LLC. Resolution number 16 will be referred to the Executive Committee. Final order of business is adjournment. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Please vote. We are adjourned.